It's almost Christmas time, folks. Grab the link uh, in the description section below and shop at Amazon using our link. It's the same shopping experience. You don't spend an extra penny. Same deal right there. You can see it there on the crawl below Ben's name. Also, join us on Patreon. You can grab that link in the description section as well. 15 cents a day. Predictions, insider look, uh, betting advice. Also, uh, watch parties and uh, exclusive live streams with you. Talking uh, Notre Dame football with Ben Belden. Boston College is up ahead. Speaking of 1993, I know Notre Dame fans don't want to hear more about 19. They they they're good with hearing about 1993 through the Florida State game. Then don't want to hear the comparisons. What happened the next week? If anybody's not following along there, as Ben um, cited at the uh, outset in 1993, Notre Dame beat uh, Florida State, a number one team that went on to quote unquote, win the national championship. I would agree with Notre Dame fans in having a dispute about that. But anyway, beat Florida State, uh, a number one team at home. And then the next week, Boston College came to town and kicked a last second field goal to knock off the Irish, their lone loss of the season. So it is Notre Dame and Boston College. Before we get to the uh, Eagles, Ben, um, you and other people had mentioned, uh, you know, when we've had you on during the offseason, the excitement about bringing on Kevin Austin and Braden Lindsay and seeing them add another dimension to this offense. Uh, they haven't been on the field, won't be on the field, um, at least Austin. And so are, are you at least happy and content? I guess you would have to be with the wide receiver performance, considering it doesn't necessarily or isn't supposed to have that that next tier of or dimension of explosiveness, but still went out and produced a ton of points. Yeah. I mean, I think what Notre Dame <clears throat> was able to rely on, um, on Saturday night was guys like J Javon McKinley, who's a fifth year senior at Notre Dame, a guy that, um, you know, he, he had battled some injuries and he had just been a little bit buried on the depth chart. He's getting his opportunity as one of the most experienced guys in the receiving core and came up big with, you know, five catches for over a hundred yards, um, in this one. And, you know, Ben Skoranek, uh, graduate transfer from Northwestern, had a couple big catches. And then Avery Davis, who is a guy that Notre Dame fans have come to love because he's played about every position, every school position on both sides of the football, it seems like, um, was recruited to Notre Dame as kind of like a dual threat quarterback. He's played running back. He played a little bit of defensive back last year, has played slot receiver, so on and so forth. Um, he came up with, you know, a big, a couple big catches most notably, um, you know, on that last drive of regulation, he came up with a big one down the middle um, to put Notre Dame in the red zone and eventually tie the score there. So, um, you know, it, it's not the guys necessarily that I think a lot of Notre Dame fans thought would be catching the ball. Um, Braden Lindsay it w had kind of been at different points last year used in like a jet sweep type of a, a situation. Um, at different times this year, they've used running back Chris Tyree, who's a freshman who has – similar type of speed and that type of thing. So they're filling in the gaps. Um, they're getting more out of the tight end position this year with true freshman, Michael Mayer, who, who made a couple big plays and missed a couple big plays, frankly, against Clemson. But um, so they're filling in in different ways. It's just, you know, I, I think the passing game's coming along. It just took a while to sort of get some of those guys indoctrinated a little bit um, because it wasn't, you know, the guys that are catching the passes are not necessarily the guys that you thought would be, the major components of Notre Dame's offense when you were taking a look at this team in the, uh, you know, in the preseason. The offense looked better in recent weeks, but uh, was obviously uneven against Duke and Louisville in particular. The defense has been uh, consistent throughout. So giving up 40 points, are you giving that more to Clemson's speed and ability and uh, quarterback play? Uh, as, as any defense is going to give up that type of point and yardage totals to that type of talent, or did you see anything you didn't necessarily like? Um, I'll, I'll say this, that under Clark Lee, it's been pretty obvious. I think that Notre Dame's defense generally picks what they, something they want to take away and they game plan around taking that away. I mean, um, I think my, you know, my favorite example of this is when Notre Dame played USC last season in South Bend, they basically played three deep safeties the whole time to make USC have a nickel and dime them down the field. And it, it resulted in quite a few yards, but they held USC's offense in check and didn't let like Amonra St. Brown and those type of guys from USC get going. Um, they had a, a nodular 
type of game plan against Clemson in the fact that they certainly weren't playing three deep safeties, but they clearly wanted to take Travis Etienne away and were going to give up, conceded that they were going to give up some yards in the passing game. And obviously they did that. I mean, um, DJ threw for, I'm not even going to try his last name, you know, on, on this I mean, because I'll just make a fool of myself, but, um, threw for more yards than any quarterback has ever thrown for against Notre Dame. Um, which it, it seems a little surprising, but I mean, given the, the new era of college football, I guess it's maybe not all that surprising, but you know, so I think they took away ETN. That was the game plan. That's what they wanted to do. They knew they were going to try to get ETN involved in the running game and in the passing game. And they were able to do that. And, um, you know, I, I know they gave up 40 points. I mean, it was 40 points, uh, 33 in regulation. And, you know, considering they scored on defense once they were also on the field a lot. So, um, and gave, you know, and gave a good offensive team a lot of opportunities. So I don't, I don't really, I don't feel any anxiety, I guess is the word, uh, about the defense based off of their performance Saturday night. I think pretty much they were as good as they have been, um, and just played against a really good Clemson team with, you know, five-star talent across the board. I've had these Clemson guys on for a few years now, so I've heard DJ's name for a few years back to the time that they recruited and signed him. I just always thought, eh, I'll, I'll learn and remember how to say his name when I have to because he's not playing. So, But then all of a sudden, boom. So Uyangalele, I believe, is the correct pronunciation. I, I have to think about it phonetically before I actually say it. Um, I so, just don't trust myself. That's really all DJ. it is. <laughs> he's right. DJ. So we go from DJ to BC and uh, Boston College, very capable with uh, old friend Phil Jerkovic as the starting quarterback, and he's played very well. Uh, I saw the fourth quarter against uh, UNC. Uh, they were a heavy underdog. It was one of those games where they got down early, and so it was kind of dismissed that they were going to lose, but then they crept back in the game, and before you know it, they're down by eight, and he leads a drive in the fourth quarter. Uh, would have tied the game, but they needed two-point conversion. They didn't get it. Uh, it was brought back actually the other way, but they took North Carolina to the final 45 seconds. So I saw that. I saw the Clemson game. That's always a different, difficult read when there's a talent discrepancy and the quarterback's kind of running for his life all the time. But uh, he's been pretty impressive. Uh, they've got a tight end in Hunter Long, who's one of the best in the business. And Jeff Halfley has uh, made things a bit more interesting and exciting there at Boston College coming in from Ohio State. So certainly not an opponent, as we saw with Clemson two weeks ago, that can be ignored. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that uh, what's Boston called five and three right now, I think, and, and yeah. playing good football, having lost, you know, two of those three losses are to Clemson and North Carolina, who are obviously ranked fairly high in their own right. So, um, yeah, I think that uh, it's going to be an interesting game. Um, obviously, after an emotional win um, of the magnitude of Clemson, you you worry about the emotional letdown. But I don't think Notre Dame is going to have the letdown, especially going up against um, a quarterback that, um, you know, if you read between the lines of some things that have been said and, and since while he was at Notre Dame and some things since he's left, um, it wasn't exactly left on great terms. And I, I think Notre Dame is going to take this pretty seriously that they're, you know, going against a, uh, familiar, um, I don't want to, I don't know if saying familiar foe makes sense, but a guy that they're familiar with. Um, so I, I generally expect that, uh, you know, I think Phil's going to play well and I think Notre Dame is going to play better. And I, I don't think this one ends up particularly close. Although Boston college, like you said, has been, um, you know, has been, noted to or has played well against better opponents and in very recent memory they always seem like that type of team generally but especially this season where they can go up against the likes of texas state and only they they had to kick a last second field goal to beat texas state 24 21 uh the 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 only non-competitive game was uh, against virginia tech they got their doors blown off by 26 they played a hapless syracuse team last week they beat them 16 to 13 uh but then they played the better teams like of course uh, clemson being the classic example and they take it down to the wire they beat pit by a point in overtime on a missed point extra and we talked about the north carolina game so i think it's an interesting challenge notre dame is clearly the better team but uh, again on the road 
in taking on a Boston College team that's certainly going to be up for the challenge. And there's some interesting storylines with Jerkovic and uh, the history of the rivalry as well. All right, Ben, we appreciate you stopping by. I want to check out uh, Ben's work. Uh, just go to, uh, there you go. Let's see, we'll find it. There we go. Real B. Belden right there on Twitter. Check out uh, Ben's coverage of Notre Dame uh, football. Ben, we appreciate you stopping by. I hope you enjoy the game. Yeah, always a good time. Thanks, Mark.